two small Edison screw LED filament lamps bought from AliExpress came through quite quickly. They have this sort of plastic outer shell available in a diffused form or the clear form. I chose the clear because I think it looks more vivid. And they're basically just emulating a flame lamp but with the outline as a filament. Let's plug them into test and then I shall take the ugliest one apart. So I shall put my tester on, plug this in. And this one's already winning the ugly stakes. Can you see that blue line it's projecting there out the side? That's very harsh. Strange off-white colour. It says 4.5 watts. The meter in this is not super accurate, but it's a start. Let's plug the other one in. This one has a much golden, warmer look to it. It's almost like a cream colour. Um, that looks better. So um, I shall take the other one apart. This one is showing about 4.2 watts, but this meter isn't super accurate. However, it's good enough for a rough indication. Now, things worth mentioning here. I'll just put that meter out of the way. The power supply is fairly high current, and it's a very small base. So what happens with these is that they often skimp. I didn't see that flickering. That's odd. Usually they skimp on smoothing components and it's either going to be a capacitive dropper in here or a linear regulator. I wonder if they've squeezed a capacitor in. Well, there's one way to find out and that is to pop it open. So let's start by prizing the little tab out the end that makes the connection to supposedly live, depending on the socket you plug it into. So that's that released. And now the only way to get this out because it's crimped all the way around, I'll zoom down for this. The only way to get this out is to get violent with it and nibble the metal away. Little mini tool avalanche happening here. So I'm going to just bite in with the side cutters here. At least it's not glass. I say it's not glass, don't think it's glass. I think it is plastic. And let's see if we can nibble a bit more. This is not very nibbly. It's not nibbly. Let me grab a pair of sharper cutters, which are maybe better suited to this smaller device. But I don't want to go too deep because I also don't want to go into the electronics too much because this will probably be fairly well crammed. I say that. Maybe it won't be. Maybe it will have amazingly minimalist circuitry. I can already see what could either be a sleeve or an electrolytic capacitor. Looks like a sleeve, to be honest. It'd be nice if it had smoothing. That's always good. I didn't see flicker though, which is a, a good start because if the really bad stuff does flicker terribly. Most of the voltage will be dropped across the filament, so it shouldn't be dissipating too high a voltage in here. We'll also take the filament out of this and take a closer look at it. Oh, that is a sleeve. It's a very flexible sleeve. I would pause for this, but some people complain when I pause. They want to see the whole carnage, which is reasonable enough. You can skip forward, but not when I uh, delete it, by uh, basically pausing while I'm doing it. Mm, this is uh, not so easy. Made harder by the fact it's very small. And also I think they've glued it onto that. I'm not sure. Oh, no, it's just crimped, that's all. Hmm. <laughs> this is not. That's always the last wee bit that is such a, a struggle here. Uh, right. No, this is not straightforward. This is the point I'd be giving up and actually just pausing. But here it goes. It is actually coming off now. It's got a capacitor. It's got what looks like a linear regulator. And a couple of wires going out to the filament. Okay, right, tell you what. I'll take a picture of the circuit board. Well, not that there's much to take a picture of. Maybe I'll just draw the schematic of the circuit board. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. It's fairly straightforward. There is a slight annoyance on this. And also it's an odd chip I've not come across before that has two support capacitors, but the data sheet makes it look a lot more complex. Let's zoom down a bit in this so we can see it closer. The incoming supply comes onto these two connections. There's a 10 ohm resistor, there's a bridge rectifier, and then there's a smoothing capacitor. I removed the smoothing capacitor, 3.3 microfarad at 400 volt death beam capacitor, from the top of the circuit board 
uh, because it was obscuring what was underneath. But it is in the top and it is sandwiched down onto this very hot chip because this is a linear regulator. So this capacitor is going to get dried out over time, as happens. Um, it powers, the positive goes to power the LEDs directly, come, goes through the LEDs, comes back to here, goes to the input pin of the chip, and uh, then it gets uh, monitored by a current sense resistor on the other side. 25.5 ohm. Um, and then that sets the amount of current this chip is going to allow to flow through it. Uh, there is a 1 mega ohm resistor, 105, 10 one zero and 5 zeros. It's on the other side and it's across the capacitor. And that is doing two things. It makes sure that when you turn it off, it doesn't gently fade away. Uh, for ages, and uh, it also means that uh, there's a slight load at all times, which means the capacitive coupling between switch wires won't cause ghost glowing of the LED filament. We'll talk more about the LED filament in a moment. This chip has two, well, the data sheet for it is quite complex. It's quite odd. I think this might be a stripped back version. I couldn't say, find a specific data sheet for the PT6912HS version. Uh, but there are two capacitors, one maybe for an internal positive voltage reference and one maybe for compensation in some way for something. Not sure, maybe it detects ripple itself and uh, reduces ripple. Although the linear regulator should provide constant current. Not sure, it might tame the current back, I'm not sure about that. Um, really that's it. So let's take a look at the schematic and then we'll take a look at the LED uh, filament itself. The schematic is fairly straightforward. There's the incoming supply, there's a 10 ohm resistor, there's a bridge rectifier, there's the 3.3 .3 microfarad 400 volt capacitor, it's discharge resistor and slight load. It makes a 340 volt rail, and then the LED filament has about 200 LEDs in it, but they're wired in pairs. So there's about 100 pairs, and the voltage, I tested it on a piece of test equipment that, with limited current, and it said 275 volts, but uh, depending on the current going through LEDs, it will vary between that up to about 300 volts across the filament. That leaves 40 or 50 volts or so to drop across this chip here. There's the sense resistor and there are the two mystery capacitors for the VDD and compensation, if that's what they actually are for. Now, the filament itself, it looks a bit like this. There's the filament with pairs Parallel pairs of LEDs then common together in series. To, and uh, I calculated, I taped it onto the table and then taped a ruler next to it and took a picture. So the closest multiple came to inches. Um, so the number of LEDs per inch was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And it's uh, 9.5 inches long. So, 21 LEDs times 9.5 inches equals 199.5. That's as good as, you know, I'm not going to count all the LEDs in this. I, I'd just keep losing track. I'm going to say 200 LEDs, but because they are wired in parallel pairs, that's effectively the 100 uh, LEDs drop uh, forward voltages. The housing is fairly straightforward. I don't think it's waterproof. Um, it has this plastic shell, and it's got alignment pins, but it is just basically glued together. So they've basically, let's see if I can do this. I probably won't be able to do it. But let's try. They've laid the LED into this. I think they've deliberately aimed the uh, LED side into the middle. Yeah, see, this is probably something that uh, is very easy if you're in the factory, but not so easy if you're not in the factory and you're just trying to do one. Anyway, I reckon they've just laid it in. I'm not even going to try this. It's, it, it's not happening. And then with those little alignment pins, they've probably put glue in this. And then they've put it together. It came apart just a little bit too easily. Meaning that I wouldn't really use this outdoor in festoon or anything like that. Although it would look great in festoon. There is the risk that uh, water ingress is going to occur. But that is it. The main bugbear of this is that the um, capacitor is right up against the 
hottest part of the circuit board. It's like sandwiched right down onto it. So, but then again, having said that, it's it's in enclosed in the little um, shell instead. But it is very minimalist. It fits a lot into a very small space. I mean, let's face it, but they're fitting all that circuitry into here, which uh, is always a tough challenge. But that is it, the LED filament-shaped candle-type lamp. It's quite neat, and it works. If anything, I would have said maybe I wanted to, to run at slightly lower power, because to me, these shouldn't be used for visual illumination as such. They shouldn't be used as sort of, to flood a room with light. They should be used to look at. And as such, you can theoretically uh, scale this down uh, by adding a, and a capacitor or resistor externally if you want to tame it down a bit. But a visually nice lamp, a very nice lamp indeed.